Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. What's going on everyone? My name is Xavier Hicks. I'm 26-year-old. I'm a high-level amateur fighter fighting out of Atlanta, Georgia, American top team. Uh, next year I'll be going pro in 2025. Wish me the best. So I'm born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I've been there a majority of my life. I moved to California when I was a kid for a few years, but we came right back to uh, Atlanta because most of my family's out there. Um, I've really been all around out there, but you know, the spot where I reside the most at is the north side. Uh, and that's basically is um, Gwinnett, Gwinnett County, but just the north side of it, but we call it the north. Um, yeah, I went through middle school all the way through high school out there, and then most of that stuff just, I don't know. It's kind of different. The way I picture y'all, like everybody else living, the way I live, I feel like it's the same, but it's really not the same. But, um, you know, just the average young adult, doing young adult stuff, partying, drinking, hanging out with friends, you know, little girlfriends here and there, but um, yeah, nothing too major, you know, just where I'm from or, you know, stuff like that, that um, I, I guess you would think odd or different. I would say uh, the stuff you see on movies, don't believe, like, yeah, that's my big, yeah, that's a big thing for me, like, stuff you see on movies, don't believe it, because a lot of that stuff is just over the top. We really just have a normal lifestyle. Just if you just think how how you would act when you was a, a young adult, teenager, and stuff like that, just think about that as me. But just in my skin. Growing up, when it was just me and my mom, uh, she was never the type to watch drama movies or comedy movies. She used to take me when I was a baby to go watch horror movies, horror movies and kung fu movies. That's what I grew up on, and I fell in love with it first sight. Um, I've been watching Kung Fu, karate movies, martial arts movies all my life. Like, ever since I was a baby, like, um, dang, there's one movie, oh, we're gonna have to re what's the, what's the movie with the, it's Kung Fu, it's like a parody, and, um, uh, it's like Kung Fu something, they got like, like frog, yeah, Kung Fu Hustle, yeah, there we go. So, yeah, one of my favorite movies was, um, uh, growing up was Kung Fu Hustle. Uh, fell in love with that. Uh, Unbok, um, Tony Jaw, I'm a big Tony Jaw fan. Like all his Unbok, his protector, and especially my guy Jet Leash. Like if you ever haven't seen a movie Unleashed, you should go watch that. But um, yeah, I grew up all my life watching Kung Fu. I got introduced to uh, anime around when I was seven by my uncle, and I fell in love with that, you know, first sight. I used to wake up. At like, I go to sleep at like 8, wake up at like 10, and go to Adult Swim and watch uh, Inuyasha and um, Bleach and stuff like that. So I always loved, that's where I fell in love with the martial arts. In high school, uh, I kind of I seen that I was the smallest guy. I was 99 pounds, like freshman year of high school, 99 pounds. I was still trying to play football. Um, everybody was lifting weights. You know, everybody was big and tall, and that kind of scared me a little bit. I tried to lift in weights, but, you know, I wasn't good at it. My forearms sucked, and um, that's when I started losing the love of football, because I realized that no matter how hard I try, how hard I play, it, it wouldn't work out because of, I guess, the stuff that I was going through, you know, within myself was kind of, lowering my, my standards where I felt like I couldn't do this. So I met this big old white dude. He got um, six big old rings and I thought they were Super Bowl rings. He came up and talked to me and um, he asked me about wrestling. And um, I didn't, at the time, I didn't know, I thought he was talking about WWE. I didn't know, uh, have any idea what he was talking about. But um, he showed me and um, the first time I seen it, I thought it was gay because the tight singlets. 
So I was like, nah, man, I'm good. Like, I don't want to do that. And um, basically, he was like, hey, just come up there for 10 minutes. If you don't like it, I'll pay you for your time. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm about to get, you know, some money and whatnot. Let's do it. I go up there, and it was love at first sight. Like, I fell in love with it. It was, it was somewhat of a calling. Like, it was natural. And you know, you know, you always got that that raw natural talent, and then you got that hard work. Or, or my first date, I just had raw natural talent. But um, that kind of what started my MMA career. Like I wrestled for almost 12 years now, so um, that was the big introduction, like wrestling. Shout out or well, rest in peace to Richard Schumacher. Um, that was my first wrestling coach. Uh, he's a three-time Hall of Fame of uh, uh, Wrestling Association in Georgia, and I think also in um, I think in Carolina. Also, um, my other coach, uh, Coach Hardy. He's also a two-time All American in North Carolina. He's currently working in Georgia, uh, assistant wrestling coach. To this day, he's still in my corner. Uh, okay. So the transitioning for me for the fight into MMA, I would say John Jones. John Jones is a big inspirational uh, like image in, in my life. Like I never seen, you know, he he showed, I, I feel like he showed me what's next for wrestlers, you know, because there's not a lot of places you can go to, you know, for wrestling. It's either the Olympics. I mean, that was it. It was either the Olympics. I didn't really know about too much of that, you know. Um, but when I first seen John Jones fight and his background was wrestling, uh, I fell in love with it. Naturally, I was always, I was always a fighter. Like I fought when I was a kid, but it was never nothing crazy where I was fighting every day until later in life. But yeah, um, John Jones he he paved the way for me. I joined the military for a lot of reasons. But uh, I guess the biggest one would say was not, I won't say not a cheat code, but somewhat of a shortcut and to get to a position where I wanted to be. At heart, I'm an entrepreneur. Like I love business and I love discipline and I love bringing my image higher than, than what it is. Like I always want to up myself. So I felt like the military would give me a head start, you know, I will learn more things about life, more about myself and be more disciplined, uh, you know, when it comes down to me being a man. I ended up joining the United States Marine Corps, which is the hardest branch in all of uh, the United States. I should have thought about that, but I was up for the challenge. Being in the military has its ups and downs, but I would say, for the guys who just going in there thinking they just want to pay for school, like, good luck, because that's just going to suck. It's a lot of hard work. You have to, it's a lot of stuff you won't, you won't like to do that you're going to have to do. And it's a big mental game. Like, you really have to be strong for it. Like, like physically and mentally. I watch a lot of guys break because they was just in there for the wrong reasons. You know, whether, you have a personal goal or you felt like you was born to serve, you know, you stick to that plan, like you, you stick to that goal and you do it. You know, if you start, start to de deteriorate from that, you know, you're not going to make it. Especially in a branch that I chose and in a job title, you know, I did. I did a lot of running gunning. I lived in jungles for months at a time. You know, I was able to shoot, you know, all types of stuff and blow up stuff, but I guess that was the perks, you know, of my job. Some days we have good days, some days we have shitty days. So, you know, I did my four years. Um, I was a grunt, so shout out to all my devil dogs out there. And for those who you don't know, that's a grunt infantry, you know, just running and gunning and stuff. Um, my unit got disbanded, so shout outs to 2-3 um, and all the guys who was um, a part of 2-3 before that. But coming in, when I was in the military, I also continued to wrestle and started doing jiu-jitsu, kickboxing, started just bringing my stuff closer to 
a career that I dreamed about. Uh, those four years, I was I would say I was in there. I kind of trained off and on, off and on, getting the feel of uh, just how I was going to be and what's to expect to me. And I would say around my middle third year, second year, I started playing my exit into coming back home and turning as an American top team. My last two weeks in the military, I called uh, American top team, Team Lima, and I spoke to one of the coaches there. Uh, the guy I spoke to, his name's Devin. Shout out to Devin, man. I really love you. Like, you really helped me out, and you're a reason why I'm here today. He basically gave me the rundown, how everything's going. I told him, you know, uh, who I was, where I'm coming from, and he basically welcomed me in with open arms. When, after those two weeks, the first day I got home, I ran straight to American Top Team. Uh, I met all the coaches, they showed me around, and I met a couple of guys, and then after that, I would say, I just threw myself head first. Uh, I came in on a Monday, and I didn't know Mondays was far days, so that was the first class I took, and oh boy, Best believe I got my ass What I'm talking about, I wish y'all could just image a little kid kicking, and, and that was me. The only thing I had in my, in my repertoire was wrestling. And best believe I was taking down everybody. I couldn't punch, I couldn't kick, and I damn sure couldn't block. It was horrible. So after that first day um, that I had, I didn't, I didn't feel bad about it. I don't know, something in my heart, it kind of gave me, like it's just a lit, like a flame in my body lit again. And I was just so excited to, to go to sleep and come the next day. Um, I would say pretty much from that day forward, I was at practice every day. I was doing four, cl four classes a day. Uh, I was pretty much trying to do every class that they had there talk to the guys, make some friends, and, and trying to see, you know, what can I give them that they can also give me. Uh, kind of like a, not a deal, but like a, I don't know, I don't know what you would call it, like a partnership or something like that. But yeah, like I'll go to the boxing and be like, hey, I know a lot of wrestling, but I suck at boxing. You know, we can work something out, boom. And that's how I met majority of my friends which is kind of weird, but that's how life is now. Like, people make friends because they look at other people to see what they can gain. Shit sucks, but I mean, it is what it is. Uh, yeah, so, went there every day for six months, almost to a year before I had my first fight. Coming up to the time where I actually was looking for a fight, it was kind of hard finding me one, and summertime was approaching. So I've heard about Bang Tao Muay Thai. I met this guy named Akitian, and he was kind of, at first when I first met him, he was kind of like, I don't know. He's a, he keeps to himself a lot, but a lot of people from the outside looking in, you, know, you can see that as something different. Like, oh, you're too good or this and that. But that was never the case. I met him and he introduced me about Bang Tao Muay Thai. Started looking into it. In the first week, I found out about it. I would say I found out about it on Tuesday. I was buying tickets Friday to come out here. I met this, so after coming out here and getting an okay from my coaches, I met this this, this dude named George Hickson. He kind of like a Mick Jagger type of person, like cool dude, you wouldn't expect, you know, just him knowing MMA or, or better yet, just living out here. But, uh, First day meeting him, like we clicked, we connected. He introduced me to all the coaches. And he, he made this feel like a second home for me. And I also didn't feel like I was cheating on my coach back at home because they all grew up together and was training together. So it was perfect for me. I ended up doing my, staying here for a month. Yeah, doing my fight camp. Uh, it went smooth, met a lot of guys. And uh, basically I yeah, trained my butt off every day. I didn't go out, didn't do nothing. So my first fight, uh, so my first fight, I fought this guy at 135 pounds. The dude was six foot. And that's kind of weird, man. I didn't know 
Like, my coaches always told me and looked at me and said, oh yeah, you're a flyweight, you're a flyweight. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not cutting all that weight. Like, no, forget that. I've been cutting weight all my life, you know, with wrestling for, for a long ass time. But I fought at 135, better weight. Uh, I had this dude who was six foot. He also was uh, his first fight as well. And uh, going in there, like my confidence through the rules. Like I came out dancing and I can't dance for nothing. But somehow, yeah, I came out dancing, kept cheesing, like I couldn't even have a straight face. Went in there and, and you know, and did what I was supposed to. Uh, a minute and a half, weird naked choke. Left there untouched. So I guess that was kind of cool, but it also made me more hungry. Coming out here, coming out here to Bangtown kind of exposed me to a lot of different stuff. So I wanted to test that, you know. I wasn't a striker and I became a striker, so I wanted to see where my skills lies. So after my first fight, I was a little upset. Um, and that's kind of weird to say, because I won and I didn't get touched. But I guess for the type of person I am, I. I like to live courageous. Like I'm a, I guess a wild personality. Like, you know, I'm a person who went skydiving almost over 40 times, you know, and I'm trying to go dive off a cliff with a um, squirrel suit. Now that's me. You won't, you won't, you won't find a lot of people my skin color who, who come out and say, Hey, that's them. They like to do wild shit, you know. But hey, that's me. But uh, after that, kept training. Uh, yeah, I didn't get out the gym. It was still for me. I had to catch up to the people that I was around. I was already around guys, pro fighters, uh, bare knuckle fighters. Shout out to my boy Nate Rivera, uh, Chad, like all them guys, Chris. You know, I was looking up to them. You know, I wanted to be like them and they've been training for a long ass time. And this was still my first year, but I made sure that I put in the work every day in the gym to now to a point where I'm matching them. You know, I don't tell them, I don't remind them like, hey, you know, I'm on my second year and you know, I'm on your head, but you know, that's what it is because I'm just so determined. Coming into my second fight, I had broke my hand. Uh, I ended up breaking all three of these right here. Two weeks out of my fight. Kind of bumped out and disappointed because um, I couldn't do it. I really couldn't move this hand at all. And again, it's an amateur fight. So I'm like, you know, I'm just going to sit out, forget it, you know. But uh, they gave me, I think, the regular six, eight weeks or whatever for it to heal. And by the last two, two weeks, I was already accepting the fight that I was supposed to take before I broke my hand. Coming to this fight, uh, it was hard. I was at my heaviest. Uh, my cardio, excuse me, my cardio sucked. Like everything was bad for me, but I never looked at it like that. Uh, I basically went in there and just had heart and determination. I ended up beating that guy as well. To the, should it, it was a split decision, but it should have been a, a de, like a major, what is it called, major decision or? I should have just won all rounds. But you know how judges be, hey, them judges be like that everywhere. But, you know, I did what I was supposed to. I got the dub and on to the next. My goals for the next couple of years is to I'm still testing out my style. I'm still trying to find out what works for me. But by the end of this year, um, I hope to have my style. And now I'm, I'm like working through the screws, you know, fixing the, the sloppy stuff or, or, you know, just the errors into my style. But yeah, I want to get deep into my style. I want to be able to express myself when I'm fighting. Now, I don't wanna to have to worry about winning. I feel like, you know, like, not to be cocky, but the amount of training I put in the hard work and sweat I put in the, on the max, like I'm destined for that. But now I wanna be able to have fun and enjoy myself and actually give the crowd, you know, a show. 
So for the next couple of years, um, I just, I'm going to work on that. That's what I'm going to fix. Um, I don't care about, well, I don't right now, I don't care about the money wise. It's never a thing for me. I just care about the experience and uh, exposure. But um, I am hoping to have a few more, t a, a few titles, you know, before I turn pro. Uh, I want to come back home, you know, after this and just continue to fight for titles for the rest of the year and, you know, start taking everybody's belt. I want to thank um, my mother, uh, my dad, uh, my cousins, my friends, my friends that I call brothers, like everybody for just the support. And I um, wanna let you know, like you guys shaped me to the person I am today. Now I won't be here without you, you know. The, I guess you guys, every little piece or every little conversation I had, y'all always impact me, you know, and I'm glad that some of y'all look up to me and it kind of, it's not a bad way on my shoulders, but it, you know, it makes me, it makes me keep going. It makes me keep grinding. And for the kids that look up to me and just for the guys in my community who think, you know, that they can't do it, that they can't travel or they can't do anything that they dream about, you know, let me be that example and uh, just take that step. Come walk with me. It's not hard.